full control there from North on the first map as they take it against NIP on Nuke. Coming up now, we have them going head-to-head -head on Inferno, a map where maybe I'll give a little bit more stock to NIP because I have seen things in the past that I like from these guys. The nice executes they have on that uh, quad or, or diggity side, as I like to call it. They have a lot of work to do to get back in this one. The players aren't even warm at this state. Yeah, true. I, I think, though, you can't really take too much away from NIP from that game. They were outplayed every step of the way. Yep. You know, it's not like they weren't on point individually. They just didn't even have a chance. They were always on the back foot. Whenever it came to actually holding a bomb side, they were at a disadvantage, uh, whether it's in numbers, whether it's in uh, position because of how well North played. So uh, I think it's going to be very difficult for North, North to replicate uh, that play style here on Inferno. One positive thing. If scoreboard is correct, which it has been every other time, so I'm just going to bank on it. North is starting on the CT side, which means they can continue that momentum. They can lock down the bomb sites. They can even have some CT aggression and really disrespect NIP and uh, keep the foot on the throat. Yeah, no, and that's exactly what they need to do as well. If they're a very convincing win like that, yeah. you, you just definitely want to keep that foot on the pedal uh, all, all the time to make sure that NIP doesn't get the, the possibility to execute and set up their plays at all. Uh, if they're always done numbers before they're anywhere near a bomb site, they're just going to keep on getting more frustrated. For, so for NIP, the cliche does apply at this point in time where they need to get that flying start, especially on that T side, and uh, preferably when the, the, oh, the pistol round converts second and third, and then even in the first weapon round. And that's the moment where then it becomes more of an uphill battle for North. I think, uh, you know, it goes both ways, saying it's what's better for momentum, right? CT side is a bit easier on Inferno to play than the yes. T side, but, you know, on the T side, no matter the map, you're the one dictating the pace of the game. You're the one who has the objective. You need to plant the bomb. You need to get things done. So for NIP, perhaps, seeing as how North was always a step ahead of them, uh, when North was on the T side, maybe NIP has more to show when they start as T on Inferno. The issue is if you go into something fast and you're not on fire, then that's when, you know, the meat grinder that is North could really just happen to them. I'm really interested to see how North are going to move their CT hold around because Magic's Boy, I'm pretty sure, was playing over towards that B bomb site with MSL. That was the duo over there. And then they, I, I'm probably wrong, but let's just go. I think it's AZ and Cajun over towards the quad and halls. Mm -hmm. And then Config was actually on the arch side and doing a lot of the orping. And he could rotate around for a lot from that position. And that's something which we touch on with a player like Config who does move around a lot. He can find a lot of kills, find a lot of openings, very JW-esque. Yeah, I mean, that's something that really I, I think will define a little bit of, of what kind of NIP we're going to see on the T side is, is how do they contest that vocal point of the map being banana? How, what kind of measures do they have of, of, of taking over where what well, used to be car? sandbags and that part of the, the back portion of, of banana because it's super cluttered up you have the little wall there and everything so so you need to have have the cojones to be able to uh, go through that part and then take it over and then you'll have a lot of options yeah. I, think, I think that was the problem for nip at times they were too static on their t side not aggressive enough in taking map control and then they would get picked apart by the awp well with that said boys it's time let's get ready to rumble henry g and just harry standing by ready to take this game the final game of the night nip versus is North on Inferno. Oh yes, Chad, we're very ready down here in the casting studio. NIP versus North on Inferno as well. NIP just got battered. Harry wasn't pretty. Nuke was not their map. But are we feeling confident they can bounce back in Inferno? Uh, yeah, well, I, we, we haven't really seen anything in North on Inferno, so uh, looking forward to seeing how that does transpire. I think uh, it, it's going to be a much better shot than Nuke is, that's for sure. Right? And I'm hoping that we can see them make it more competitive. There were certain signs of life there at the end of Nuke. Like, you know, we, we saw that the NIP machine did ha indeed have a pulse. Forrest, at least. Yeah. He, he did come to life. But this is the first Pro League game where NIP didn't have the, the king of banana, you know? That's, be... that's very true. Yeah, so... Very uh, emotional. We'll see what happens. It's going to be Inferno, and we'll see whether a new king can be crowned, perhaps, as we get into the first round here. NIP will be starting on the T side. Four sets of armor exist with the smoke and two flashbangs, no upgraded pistols for them. CZ for MSL on the CT side, and they've got a diffuse kit on Valda with a couple of flashbangs to work with as well. In terms of the setup, by like default for now, but that's not for us from way downtown. In second middle, takes down Cajun V in the bedroom area. That's kind of sick. Well played. Yeah, I mean, they've been given that for free now. They're going to try and commit up towards B, just soaring on in. Perhaps in memory of Freiburg, they're going to make their way up through Banana. And now Config, the flash rains in, it's perfect. It's a shooting gallery for him, but he doesn't get much work done. Instead, it's MSL to step up with the CZ. He only takes one, but he's bought time for the rotates to come in. The bomb plant hasn't gone down either. There's actually, Mom has been dropped over on the site. It's going to get picked up. 
But not before Valde dispatches a forest, leaving this all unexisting, a 1v3. Trapped over by Coffins, bomb out in the open. That smoke's dissipated down in CT as well, and that means that Config can just sit pretty. They're gonna go ahead and push on through, force the issue and force Exist back off of the site. Now he's got to fight for it all over again. This is the B-bomb site round two for Exist. As now 1v3 peeks on out, has so many angles to keep an eye on. Backed into a corner here, doesn't realize they've just taken up position. Trifecta within the cyber damage done. AZ's tag low. The peak comes on uh -huh. in. He accidentally kills AZ there while he's aiming for Valder. And Valder gonna try and fall back down. Banana, but exist. He's made it possible. 1v1. Exist's gonna do it. He wins that one out. Fantastic stuff from him. And that is gonna be NIP looking fantastic here on the back of that pistol. Okay, exist. You get a kill for free. Weren't really aiming at the first one. But. The second two, I can't argue, that was the shot. Maybe he did line it up. I'm not 100% sure, actually. Well, could have been bad aim on the first shot and took him down, but the next two were just stellar. My God, that's really good. You don't expect those kind of plays from Exist these days, but when he does show up, it can be quite the show. Well then, North, three versus one. They give that one away. It's going to be round number two here. CZ's Deagles, PD50s for North and the Force Spy. One AK for an IP. Three UMPs and a MAC-10. That's in the hands of Draken. They get some banana control here. And they will just assert their dominance, push the CDs back. And that's a lovely flashbang, though. That teamwork from Convic and his teammate uh, MSO is now dead. Get the first frag, but things have been equalized. Coffee still resides here with the Deke, doesn't get much done on that re-peak. The rotate's already coming on in from north, the B-bomb site has crumbled, and this time it's all gone the way of NIP. Cajun B, first man on the scene, trying to get this desperately back under control, while Valde and AZ still have yet to leave A. They're just going to be holding onto these pistols into the next round, and Cajun B, sure he's playing it a bit more close, trying to play with fire. But uh, he's hoping to try and get a rifle, an SMG, something into the next round if he can, and just do some damage here from inside the church. It's going to be waiting. NIP will be getting themselves a second round, though. That's the start they need on this T side. Good stuff initially. A lot of promise. And uh, Much better than the first map, at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, within B, that that already the, the config MSL B-hole is looking like a force to be reckoned with. The flashes they've thrown out, both in the pistol and in that round there, are uh, looking pretty tough to counter from NIP. They, they didn't seem to have any rebuttal to it. Well, they do take the round, NIP. Looking for that 3-0, almost certainly going to happen. We do have three saved pistols and body armor to work with here on the north side, so not over just yet. They could cause some damage here. North will be trying to find that opening shot. Like we saw a banana once again. That was Config with the Deagle being flashed in by MSL. Not really much that I think could do about that. Here we go then, round number three, and it's a four-man stack towards the B-bomb site. KGB patrolling towards the middle. He's got the CZ in hand, and Config and AZ to challenge once again. Three sets of armor going to be uh, fairly pivotal in this one for North if they want to try and throw a spanner in the works. Keeping three players alive as well on the back of that was a, a very decent decision. Something we don't really see a lot of teams actually commit to uh, all that often, but now they've essentially got a second chance to go at it once again. The flash rains in, and once again, it's extremely powerful, but Rez and Exist completely just churn through North there. They get put through the meat grinder, and now Cajun B and Valda. They're all that remain. Cage and B going to start to try and go aggressive up and out. It's going to be feeling this one out. And get right is there. That could be a frag to present itself. Valder, though, while he has looked to be fairly, fairly hot in recent matchups, there we go. He's just going to fall straight away over on B, leaving this all on Cage and B. Four and one. Now Cage and B. Surely. Can't find any footing here. Might find a kill. That's quite nice. Cajun B doing a good job. And he's going to be taken down. Get right, but exist. He says no. The 3 0 for an IP. Much better. I think that's all the rounds they got in the first half. And they actually got four. I beg your pardon. So, uh, still, promising start here on the T side. This time, they will have plenty of money to work with. Forrest will keep his UMP for sure. He knows there'll be some unarmored heads on the CD side after the force bite. There are indeed three of those. And Draken with the early orb. Not sure that's required just yet, but. He'll bring it out, knowing that they won't have an open on the CT side. I guess it does make sense in that regard. They might go aggressive at B, and he could just find an easy kill. Nades coming in, though. We'll take a little bit of damage there, but not too much. I'm looking for the counter boost now as he looks towards the wall position. Yeah, we're going to be holding as well over here in apps. It's Forrest. He's the man who's gone aggressive along with Get Right. 
they just wait. This bomb gonna be on the back of Exist, doubling back through mid. Where he joins the rest of the guys down here at the bottom of T-Ramp. Smoke gonna start to dissipate soon. And actually, North, they're gonna start pushing down. Walking into the reins of NIP, who are just all backed up at the bottom of Banana, but it's a slaughter as MSL and Config between them. They somehow put together three frags, the UMP and a Famous. They've done damage, Forrest is able to get the return, but that is it, it's already the 2v4. Really interesting decision there from NIP. Got a minute left, and you're running for a smoke at the bottom of Banana. I normally I say like smoke shouldn't be considered like force builds, but at that particular choke point, they definitely should be. You should not be running through that smoke right there. You can see, see even with a flashbang, they can like just turn away from it, turn around, spray you all down. You can't see anything for like, one or two seconds when you come through. And that's one by one as well. That's a really disappointing way to finish that round for an IP. After a promising start, off the back of a three versus one clutch from Exist, you feel like they're going to do something a bit more tactile than that. But apparently not. You can see all the corpses, the human rubble on the floor. And it will just be Rez trying to hold on to his AK-47. They get one kill, take down MSL, but not if it's too easy in my book towards that B side. It's going to be two kills for Config, two for MSL. Quite a deadly duo at that B bomb side. Rez does find the AWP at least. And they'll be holding out a T spawn. So still, it's fine for an IP that will have money to work with here. Just a little bit lackluster in terms of the finish uh, towards run number four. The orb wasn't picked up though for North, so they don't have that to play with into this one. It will just be rifles once again. Draken going to be on the orb for NIP. That's a bit of utility bought up as well. Everyone in NIP with pretty much everything they would need. Draken's the only man who's a little bit limited as a result of picking up that orb into round number five. And he's going to take it very, very quickly over here to Banana. Smoke will fall to obscure the vision. Config goes for the pre-fire. He has to be careful here. And actually, he's going to tag him. Does manage to just clip him through the wall. Config sent reeling back. Tagged to 35 HP. And Forrest. Near a boiler. He was looking like he was going to go fast out. Valder is holding the angle along with Cajun B. Cajun B, he's watching the stairs. And he hasn't seen Forrest cross. So they don't have the information that Forrest is there right now. Cajun B, tagged low, has to get the hell out of there. NIP right now looking good in this round as they station up in towards apartments, ready to try and make their way out on 2A. Still a 5 on 5, but you're right. Damage inflicted on both sides. And get right trying to find that frag as he sprays some bullets through the smoke. There's a bit of wall bang damage there, but still alive. Bottom down in second middle. No presence towards Banana whatsoever. Config more than happy to hold B by himself. From what I can see on the minimap, looks like he's on the wall position right now. So his teammate will fall back. Four players towards the A side. It's MSL in towards the arch. And that crossfire set up on the A side. Looking very powerful right now. MSL needs to be careful here. He'll fall back. But there it is. First kill comes in. Exist finds Cajun. But MSL to his spot. Valde up within the site doing damage. Turns him out of advantage favor north. Him and AZ have the crossfire set up as they stand on top of the boxes. Doing the damage. AZ and Valde lock this round down. That will be north to get themselves a second. And well, right now, NIP looking a little bit deflated on this T side. Going to go for the buy. We're only, we're only uh, six rounds in, so, you know, it's, it's early days. North starting to feel this early comeback. Should be able to equalize this out 3-3 here. Yeah, and from what I've seen so far, they could be running away with this one. NIP, it, on this version of Inferno, I've never been convinced by them. Uh, I've casted a few games, and uh, it always seems a T-side. That's the problem. They, they really struggle with banana control and utilizing uh, the grenades to push CTs back. It's when they're up against an aggressive CT side, that's when NIP really seem to fall off quite significantly. If they're playing quite a passive team, they normally do pretty good. But we'll see what they can do. Like you said, very early days. Nothing really invested into this round. Exist got head armor and a CZ. How much money did he spend into this one? Still has 2,200. He did win that clutch, so he has a bit more money. And his teammates, good flash though. It's going to be Valda to get down Forest. A little bit of help from Cajun B there as well. Bombs towards top of middle. I don't really see much happening here for the T's. Smoke deployed there. Buys the CD some more time. But mid control granted towards an AP. But once again, with no nades, no firepower, you're going to struggle to really convert it into an yeah, Exist gets boosted up and instantly comes to regret that decision. And uh, right now, NIP sharing in the world sentiment. They've faced a bit of deforestation. They are a man down. And now they seem a bit rooted in their ways. They make their way out towards long. They're actually going to bypass Cajun Beach. Switches things up. Finds the first out with the USP. Going to fall to get right. Now they've got an AWP to try and play with. But AZ in pit represents a whole different challenge. As he's able to flick on out. Finds one onto Exist, leaves this now on Get Right and Res. 2v4, 
Out towards Arch, they've been spotted. Valda takes the aggression here, but he's going to fall prey to Rez. Luckily enough, the trades come, comes through from MSL. He's got control of the bomb, and Get Right's looking in the complete wrong place. Meaning AZ comes out and shoots him in the face. It's going to be 3-3. North, they tie things up, and now the buy can come back in for NIP. A few missed shots there from Cajun. Gives NIP a few kills on the board. Comes down to the two-versus-one situation, and Get Right... Not known to be an AWPA, but can be quite nifty with it. Can't find the shot. It's going to be round number seven, 3-3. Three, three. So after going out 3-0, NIP have let things slip by them. But, have a full buy for them. For them this time, no Draken AWP though. And two players towards Banana once again. AZ with the smoke to buy them some time at the very start. That goes by the wall position at B. And for now, Cajun B, he's holding middle. Like we said, not the most aggressive AWPA. He's not like a Kenny S or a Guardian trying to get opening flashy picks. He just holds defensive lines. He does it very well. So, that's a different play style, but certainly works for him. Forrest takes his peek on out, but Cajun B, he has his back. And already we've lost Forrest. He has fallen. And that seems to be a uh, constant phrase we keep churning out. Forrest, the first man down for NIP yet again. Now they have to try and approach this. Only being a man down, but they lost all the utility he was carrying. So already a very, very uh, strap for cash. T side they are struggling that much more. With the remaining four Swedes grouped up in mid, looking like they want to try and execute out towards A. They have to be cautious because looks like Config and MSL are getting a little bit confident over here on Banana and are ready to take the fight to them. Five and four, NIP. Can they make anything of this? Two smokes remaining. A Molotov as well, get right, investigating towards the quad side. There is a speculative Molotov there to try and bait out a CT player. No one there, though. There is a CT in the pit, but he's on the right-hand side. That's AZ. Going to be quite a decent hard fire. And it's going to be Cajun B. Finds the first shot. Now it's a five on three. Nothing really spectacular coming out of an LP. No execution here. Just one by one, walking around corners, and they're dropping like flies now. This is looking too easy. We're not seeing the shots occasion, but they sound pretty good. And there will be one more to come through. It's going to be AZ to finish things off. The Draken goes down, and that's quite a, kind of disappointing, I have to say, Aria. They're not really... They're getting some mid-control, but then one person runs around out by himself. One person in the apartments, one's a quad. Uh, where's where's the teamwork? Where's the coordination there? Where's the execution? There's nothing. That's like a, you're playing like a pug star there. You're just trying to do, find a pick, and then you still, even if you get one kill, you're by yourself. You've got one player at arch, one a quad, one in apartments. You can't really do much with it. So it's better just to be together, find that pick, sure, and then be ready to pounce, but uh, NIP look a little bit lost to that approach of the game. 4-3 has to be another eco, I believe. It looks like a pause for now. Yeah, you know, one of the things is, you know, threat is very, very normally very good. That's the uh, coach for NIP at uh, discovering these uh, these sort of setups and, and pushing NIP in the right direction, maybe when the decision isn't clear to them. So they are going to go ahead and force buy down what they can into this, investing so they can afford the buy into the next. It's got the three flashes, the smoke up on Forest as well. Curiously how they are going to run in this round now. and What decision would have been made in that pause? That pop flash allows Valdi to come on in, finds a boatload of damage. The nade could secure him a frag here. Gets Rez down to one HP, and he hears the man rushing up into apps, but they are so ready for this. Get Right has so many guns pointed in his direction. His life expectancy looking to be about three seconds at this point as he waits in the corner up and apps the Molotov to burn him out. As things get a little bit hot and toasty for Get Right, he does opt to fade away. Doesn't want to sit around while the rest of the team Way down in mid, they're just going to try waterfall out from apartments. Valdi on the site once again on top of these trusty boxes. Takes two. Get right and Draken try and trade back, but it's AZ from Pit to knock this nail into the coffin. Draken left in a 1v3. He's got himself an AWP, and that could be the difference maker. But opting for the Deeg. Yeah, well, it, it feels like this could be over. They, he's got to get the bomb and find those three kills as well. He might get that kill, but then as soon as he gets it, as soon as he tries to get the bomb, that's when his teammates will be pincering in. But here we go. It feels like the final few seconds of the round. A little bit desperate here. He hits one. Takes down config, but there it is. MSL with the final frag. Here's the replay now. Valda with the M4A4 on the side. Nice aim, it's, to be fair. Got a little bit baited by AZ there at that point, but still, they win the round, and it's absolutely fine. 5-3. Five, five in a row for NI... Oh, for North, I should say. NIP could get the 3-0 at the start. But now, loss bonus starting to accumulate. They can pretty much consistently buy at this point. Haven't had the bomb down in the last few, but still, $3,400 per player. I'll go to round number nine. Quite a fast half so far. Not really seeing anything spectacular from the Ninjas. This is the Fallen Boost. Cajun B 
Looking for that first pick. You can see players crossing towards that log position. He dropped the Incendio to start us off. Anyone getting close range and sneaking by you just in case they had a decent spawn. But for now, it'll be absolutely fine. Another default from an IP. Not showing any banana presence whatsoever. Still with five smokes. I want to see an execution. I know they've got a couple. They do a full wall of smokes towards A that covers the pit, lands on their hay bales, and blocks off gra graveyard. So maybe they'll do something like that. And actually, the decision has come in from MSL over on North to uh, switch things up. You can see he's uh, made his way over towards A. They swapped him out for Cajun B on the B bomb site, so they don't have the AWP here this time. Valdi going to fall, and actually, down goes AZ as well. MSL tries to step up, but Exist is there on the trade instantaneously. And that will be the 2v4 Cajun B. Rotating in with the AWP, going to be posted up at Library. The bomb hasn't gone down just yet, so it's bought them time to get in a position. And if KGB finds something here, then it wouldn't surprise me if we see them try and go for this. But if he does not, I think the call to save will most likely come in. Config already starting to back away. KGB going to stay here just a little bit longer, see if he can pick anyone up as they walk around the site. Do damage to that T-side economy to try and keep them modest going forward. But this will be a fourth for NIP. It will. You're right. Not really much Cajun can do about this one, apart from find a few consolation frags, but that's much better from an IP. The depot there, getting that first pick. Execution was on point. I saw a really nice little smoke that landed on the bomb site. Grant and his vision took it away from the CTs, and they go in together. The pincer was there from the site and the apartments at the same time, hitting some shots. Exist looking very good at that point. That's what we wanted to see. That's much better. So, getting things together, that's NIP after losing five in a row. Managed to deploy the execution towards that A site. Didn't actually have any banana presence whatsoever, which is quite rare to win around in that sort of fashion like that, but it works out. 5 4 as they close the gap here. Still money available for North, of course, after saving weapons there. It should be on the AWP. Went towards banana in the previous round with the fallen boost. I would say do that again, seeing as it wasn't detected in the previous round. You will be heading indeed, not towards Benign actually, but there are three players there. AZ drops the smoke of the brick wall once again, and Config and MSL might do a boost themselves. We'll find out. Yeah, they bring AZ on round. It was him who uh, threw that smoke on down. That now leaves the two guys over on B with two smokes their own. Allows them to hold back the uh, tides of NIP for that much longer. Yeah, for sure. Means they can bide their time and save the smokes when they need them and hopefully we'll down the clock for an IP there. So they smoke towards T-Steps and now they do have full control of the banana area. Cajun B looks towards Boiler with the AWP trying to find that first pick. It's a scary position to be in as long as you smoke middle. It's rare that a terrorist will just push through randomly. So set off five on five, no damage inflicted just yet. Config left alone at the B side. Like we said, I saw the minimap in the previous round but Looked like he was on that wall position. Very good aimer. Happy to take Jules. Has another smoke to work with as well. Just buy himself some time. Four players towards A for the CT side. And uh, this time NIP, they're going to try funneling up through Banana. Config finds that first. The rotate already coming in from M MSL. Oh. Config has to hold his ground and hold it. He shall as he takes a second. MSL, he's the man on point. The one within the site to try and keep them away. Flashes through at CT. Doesn't bother pushing it. Doesn't want to try and give away that man advantage. Doesn't buy time, though. The bomb plant is going to come on in. That flash got them a few seconds, but yeah, that smoke has missed its mark. MSL can peek round past it. Rez is lucky to be alive. They've re-smoked it. They've used a lot of utility in the process. Get right. Takes one more. The trade going to come in from Cajun B. North maintain the man advantage here, but the bomb ticking away, working against the Danes. As Rez holding the close angle. Forrest is going to fall. Rez peeks out and takes one, but it's Cajun to ultimately trade things back. He was the key in that retake. Three frags for him, Config going off in the beginning as well to keep them away. And that will be North in with their sixth round. More than Config was worth there, I think. The fact he got two frags there shouldn't have been happening. NIP should have been an instant refrag. The fact of the matter is he was flash. He gets that first kill. He should be taken down there. Well, we'll have a look as to how this round finish off with the AWP here. That's going to be Cajun B hitting the solid shots. That's really nice work by him. But if NIP get that refrag on Config straight away, they probably win that round, but not meant to be. And now the money starting to disappear for them. It's round number 11, 6-4. You get right down to nothing now. Just at the CZ, Cajun B. I did say he's more of a defensive AWP, but that's really nice and aggressive. Aggressive, finds the first kill and falls back as well. Nothing too spectacular, just good, honest play. And he's going to be falling back, staying alive, holding that defensive line once again. Once again. All power for Draken. But no head armor means going up against his M4 is a bit of a problem. Insta-kill potential there. Bottom down the second middle, and everything comes to a standstill here. 
Once more, North have full control of Banana. Config and himself pushing down. Might be exploring the idea of maybe going a little bit further here, but the smoke goes down and they'll be holding at the car for now. Valdi has spotted Forrest. Forrest didn't see anything and he wins that out. Two man advantage up now for North and NIP in response to this. Gonna go ahead and throw smokes out over towards Long. Now Molotov keeps them away. They can't push through and that now isolates them from Rez over in Boiler. Currently they're all on his lonesome. Four players for North up in the A bomb site. They've left config on his lonesome at Banana. Just gonna be holding the angle. Draken. Ooh. Nice, nice movement, but uh doesn't quite doesn't quite stack up if, if you don't manage to find config. It was just lying in wait. Exist and res, they're the two Swedes left in this one. 2v5. Clock working against them here. They're gonna lose exist. Res. Bomb dropped all the way over at long. Nothing he can do in this scenario here. And MSL just takes the peak, knocks him down, and that is north to go up seven to four. Very clean round as well. Cajun B, aggressive at the start, gets that first pick, falls back, and allows his teammates to get set up with the confident crossfires. There's still two of Banana flying, so much pressure, funneling them towards A. They're setting every single shot. NIP being shut down, left, right, and center. They'll take a pause and work out what the next move is. A 2K per player right now. Not looking too good. Is uh, the replay of Convict. So fully flying. And that's the point that he should be going down there. The fact he got two frags when he's just pre-firing it as well, it's a little bit disappointing. They didn't get him straight away. You know, they should be coming around as soon as he took down the first player, just fully commit. They just weren't really ready for it. And then going one by one, gave him the chance to get that frag. And uh, we'll see what happens here as we have got the pause. I assume tactical. Yep, indeed. So threat. He can talk throughout. He can't even call if he wants an online game. It's not really a way we can kind of govern that, you know? So uh, it does take a pause just to work out what the next move is. I don't think they'll buy into this. In terms of loss bonus, they're only at second. So that's $1,900 this round. In terms of the frags, Draken three for nine. That orb isn't really working out for him. I think you just cancel that now. It's just not really uh, finding much impact at all. But uh, NIP have won decent round so far. Remember, they won the piston with a 3-0. Need to get a few more rounds on the board from what I've seen so far. Looks like they're finally going to try their luck at the B-bomb. So we've only really seen them try and hit this one or two times on these rifles. And uh, never really led to too much success. They haven't allowed to get in here, though, and get the bomb down. So let's see if they can replicate that now with the pistols. We've got MSL and Config here. MSL, the man lining up the flash. That's going to allow Config to uh, wreak havoc on these eco-wing players. Flashbang going to go on out. It does fully blind Config, and MSL's not looking too too great either, but now he starts lining them up. Get right finds one, Config is gonna fall, and that's the B-bomb site crippled, broken in two. Bomb plant tries to come on in, Cajun B, the first responder, oh, tapping away, and he's looking goodness. impressive. Takes a second, goes in for three, and Cajun B, not normally a man we associate with such a hyper-aggressive style of warping in towards the retakes, but there we go. He shows he can do it, along with the best of them. And will be north to go eight to four on the back of a very impressive retake from Cajun. That's lovely, isn't it? Cajun V really has turned up today. Uh, I normally find him a bit hit or miss with the AWP, but for now, today at least, he's looking spectacular. Every shot's just on point, very calm, calculated, and that retake, that's Stella, just by himself, an absolute unit wrecking through the B-bombs like there. 13 kills, six depths, and 108 ADR. Not too bad at all. It's round number 13. The dying sector's up the first half here. We do need some rounds on the board for an IP. Pistol and one round. I don't think it's going to be enough. The 11-4 just can't happen. Similar scenes to what we saw on Nuke. Have a default for now. That execution works so nicely for them. The round, the round they did win, that gun round, I think, let's go back to something like that. The default, you're not finding the picks, you're getting out jeweled across the board. I feel like this, getting those smokes down and trying to go into the five man unit, that's when you have your best chance of winning the rounds. Definitely so. And our Cajun B, he's the man to try and put a stop to that before they can even get this ball rolling. Holding the aggressive angle. Starts to now fall back, smoke dissipates in mid, and that will be. The signal for him to leave as he retreats. What of the safety of Vine? She's going to be holding the angle. Actually going to fall back into library. What this means is, though, is if you get a smoke down over there, you've locked one of these players on the A site out from the bomb site. Effectively leaving it on AZ and Valde. But uh, KGB going to make the decision now to rejoin his comrades within the confines of the site. Molotov goes out to delay the push from Apps and exist. Pushing on up. The flash lands. Smoke goes down for library. 
They also smoke off Archside. They're going to try and commit to this, but the pop flash come through. Cajun B finds the first. Wants to go in for more, and he's going to go for it. But Forrest saves his teammate's life over a long, and in the meantime, it's a slaughter. Get right and res. They mop up the remainders within that A site. And now MSL and Config, the two B players. That's all that remains for the Danes here. Two versus four. They're not going to be going for this one, just playing it safe, holding back. And IP will get themselves a fifth. And once again, Henry, it was on the back of a execution in towards the A-bomb site. That's why I'm the coach for an IP. Do you remember that meme? When that was a thing? It was you, it was Star Ladder, like six months ago, and everyone thought it was real. It was on front page of Reddit and stuff like that. But yeah, that's exactly what they had to do. More of these executions. No one's really turning up today in terms of the actual individual skill. Just keep those smokes coming in. It seems to be working. North haven't got a response. I like to just keep throwing that in until they're able to shut it down because that's what's getting you rounds. That's what's working. They're convincing ones of that. Config might find a kill or two here. It's a position to do so. Sprays into the door. Can't find it at the end. Well, A5. Another much needed round for an IP there. And number 14. Still money available for North. They should be fine. Yeah, they've got two players even after reinvestments on 5k, 4k. Money will be tight if they lose this one, but still maybe another buy available. AK is an orb for Draken. Let's see if he stepped up a little bit more. Still on 3 for 10. I don't think that orb is the answer for him. He's not getting those opening picks, so I'd say just cancel at that point. This is the fallen boost once again from Cajun, dropping that incendiary to pushing on back that could have rushed up. And now they'll probably go for even more map control and get him on the wall position now. Yeah, but he won't be spotting anyone anytime soon. Draken's the only one who resides there, and he's going to start to fall up through old mid. The push comes through. It catches AZ on the way down in pit. And now Valdi trapped over here on short. Spots the man on balcony. Didn't manage to see him, though, and get right. He's able to polish him off as a result. Forrest in with two. And in the blink of an eye, Cajun B in config. Once again, the two B players left to try and clean up the mess on A. And they will turn down the job. Just go ahead and fall on back. Config and Cage and save up into the next. And if they hold on to this, then a buy is going to be very strong heading into this uh, next round. Should be able to get a fairly decent buy cobbled together in comparison to what they could get otherwise. They'll be allowed the AWP. Won't have to forego any firepower for it. They could still get one in the next round if they lose it. MSL could go ahead and drop one over, but they sacrifice so much as a result of that. And I'd be looking much better now. Get their sixth round on the board, shutting things down. MSL and Config finally shut down. It seems MSL gets dropped. And they go towards A once again. It's actually quite nice when I this focus on that A bomb site. Same place. It's going to be working out for days for them. As we said, money should be okay. They saved some weapon. The fact they've saved the orb there, that's great. And uh, there it is, 8 6. We might have a real game on our hands here as the first half is coming to an end. Yeah, his buy is about as good as it gets. They've got rifles across the board. Everyone with uh, decent amounts of utility kits across the board as well. So pretty much everything they could ask for. Same for NIP. It's going to be just a fully stocked round for either side in the last round of the half. It is all going to come down to the raw skill in this one. MSL and Config. They've got this two-man hold up top of Banana. And they've already found some success from it. Exist. First man to hit the deck. They're going to flash over and go in for even more. MSL takes the peak. Bullets rally past. Drak going to miss that opener. That could have been a very much, a very needed kill for them. But Valdi and Config in the meantime, just destruction out on A as Valde from Quad locks it down. It's all left on Rez. 1v4. He has the bomb at his feet. Has an AWP in hand. But it is a tall order. The latest edition of NIP. With his back against the wall. An essential round. I think if NIP get this, it's a very, very close half. 9-6 isn't terrible, though. Going to start making his way up, Banana. They know there's two players here. It's Config and MSL. The hold that has been a problem from the beginning. Going to and smoke over. Is he going to account for both players holding it close? Finds the first. MSL's waiting to trade. No and good night, Sweet Prince. Rez goes down, and that's the first half. 9-6 in favor of North. Well, decent comeback there from NIP, I have to say. It was looking very bleak at one point. North were completely running away with that first half. But still, it's NIP with six rounds on the board and a dream as they go into the second half. We'll take a quick break and see if they can fulfill that after the break.
right, welcome back to the final half of the evening. It's NIP versus North. NIP trailing a map at the moment after getting battered on Nuke, but still, they are 9-6 down here on Inferno, looking to win the pistol and hopefully get back into this one to split the series. That's the, the dream at least for them, looking to post a map here in the Pro League. North looking incredibly sharper at the moment, I have to say. Yeah, and it's been one man for NIP who's kind of been letting me down time and time again, and that's been Draken. Currently bottom of the board, hasn't really done much. He's 3 and 11 right now, 29.5 ADR. So uh, definitely needs to step up. He's someone who can be such a catalyst for NIP as well. When he first joined the roster, he looked phenomenal and he kind of reinvigorated that lineup. And then we saw Rez get bought in as well and it went you know, even better for a while after that. But uh, right now, Draken, he's been almost silent. He hasn't really done anything with the AWP. You even call maybe for him to try and switch off onto the rifle a little bit, both, you know, because the economic advantages of it all, but also just because he was not hitting those shots. And, well, now they're over on the CT side. Let's see if history repeats itself or if the, or if the Swedes can emerge victorious here and split the series. Yeah, the AWP definitely a lot more viable on the CT side for Draken. But here we go, then. We get into it. Round number one. North, they win this. One step closer to finding that 2-0, and Rez misses out narrowly there on the headshot. Minute 30. Two smokes for North. Back pocket of MSL on Valder. I would say a banana take very possible. You've got a smoke for CT spawn, one for coffins, flash over. You've already got banana control. That would be my core DNA right now. You've got a nice early B control right now. CTs don't really have much to work with here. You've pushed them back in middle as well. Look at that mini map setup. And for now, Rez holding the corner. That will be smoked off any second now. Then towards Coffins, Flash is coming in. It comes down to whether the CTs hit their shots. Rez going to be holding this from CT. The smoke's rain in, and that means a lot of this falls to Get Right as Rez is forced on back. Get Right, they all come bounding through. He takes the first, tries to keep holding it, but the smoke is down. Won't be able to deny the plant, but he has taken that man advantage. And already, NIP rotating everyone round through CT. MSL going to be holding the smoke for North. They've also sent one down through Banana. That's going to be Cage and B. Doesn't spot anyone else in mid. That means that they know they're all coming through CT now. And he's just going to hold it. Bomb is planted for Banana. Cage and B in the after plant. The rest of the guys on the site to try and keep NIP away. The push now comes in. No utility. They try and expend to force these guys out of position. They have to win the Angels instead. And Valdi and MSL open this one up. Config holding the cross. Oh, they're wow. already walking into the slaughter. And that's North, they're going to go up 10 to 6, they win out that pistol. It was looking good when Get Right found the first, but look at this, this was an execution. It was, Config and Valder going to town, that new superstar duo that could be for North. It used to be Config and Major's boy for Valder, he's looking incredibly sharp at this moment. Very good fit for North, generally speaking, round number 2 has to be the force buy from NIP. Everyone's all in, Draken with a Deagle and armor as well. And Drake is still on three kills, 12 deaths. He needs to start stepping up here. CT half has to be where he starts delivering some frags here. UMPs, one AK, four North. Opted for more utility. That makes sense. They are execution-based team known to have some of the best executions in CSGO. The system on that map in particular was pretty scary. Banana with the bomb. Slowly but surely looking to join them. Config looking like he's rotating around as well to run over with the rest of the guys down in mid. Aldo waits in alt mid. And actually, North now progressing up through middle. Going to look to try and make their way out towards A as everyone is lined up here. Slowly but surely pushing on out and Draken and Exist. They're the two players. I have this crossfire set up, Draken with the Deeg. We know he can be deadly with this weapon. Holding the angle, doesn't find anything on that initial peak, falls on back, turns his attention out towards long, has to be careful as players now wrapping around from all sides. The pop flash was good, but it doesn't transpire to much. And while Forrest gets nothing done from Pit, it's all eyes on Rez, 1v4. The A bomb site falls, and at this point, Rez with only a Deeg to his name, a flash as well. Struggling to believe he can get much damage done. Oh, I'm believing. I think he can do this. <laughs> yeah, that's unusually optimistic for you. Okay. I thought I'd just change things up, you know. Well, then let's see. I mean, it's new new look Nip, new look Henry as well as Rez. He's making his way in through library, and they say knowledge is power, so right now he's got plenty of it. But uh, 
No, it yeah, he's, like not, he's not going it's for done, it. It's done, unfortunately. You know, I wanted to kind of channel something towards him <laughs> and maybe give him some positive vibes, but it didn't really seem to work out. You know, but it's fine. It will be a four versus one now, and... Round two will be going very north. It was the force by Fen IP as well. This makes things very problematic. Almost certainly going to be 12 6. There it is. The round comes in. 11 6 now, and they have to take the full eco here. Touching distance of winning 2 0. Have to say, north as a little package here. It, it's nice to see. Like, who are the shuffle do we think is looking the best right now? So we've got north looking very good. FaZe looking pretty good. They've had some ups and downs. Um, who else have we got? Uh, I'm missing one that I had in my head that was really good. Uh, North Face. Fnatic. Fnatic, that was the one. They are looking great. Probably the best Fnatic we've seen in a long yeah. time in terms of the way they're playing CS right I now. I think the contenders for the top spot right now are North of Fnatic, in my opinion. I'm still unsure about Guardian's place in, in the Phase roster, if I'm completely honest. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe when that all gets sorted out, I think they've hit that awkward period of transition that we saw the team like G2 kind of get into. But uh, anyway, in this round, North, they've started things off well. They're able to find Get Right. As he made his way down through Banana. Now the rest of the ninjas grouped up in B, and MSL peeks out, gets the information that they're all there. And actually, we're just going to see Exisco charging into the guns. Actually, every single Swede is doing it. Rez able to get one, but that will be it. It was the bomb drop down in the open. He can look to try and do more damage here, as he does manage to take a second. He's making this round costly. MSL and AZ attack so low. North don't have to keep pushing in for this. They do get the bomb. And now they're going to start to fade away. Rez on 27 HP. Maybe he could do it this round, Henry. Maybe this is the one for him to step up. When you look <laughs> at it, there's, what, 15 HP on AZ and MSL combined. Valdi, granted, does have 100. And it looks like they're going to try wrapping one of these players around out towards A. Going to get the information that it's clear. So now that bomb rotates in. Rez, with a glimmer of hope in his young eyes as he... Still is towards the wrong side of the map. Bomb we plant that pretty much guarantees that this will be a north round. He has been detected as well. They've heard him towards the bottom of Banana. Not really much he can do. Can't go for the round now. He has got body armor, a UMP, a Deagle as well. Definitely worth staying alive here. Him fighting frags, almost worthless. I'd say just try and tuck yourself in a corner. Look for whatever you can. Salvage whatever's on the floor. Uh, try and stay alive. He knows players could be coming from CD Sport as well. So this is probably the best angle he can hold for now. Easy killing the chickens, of course. Or not. The frag does come in. All of NIP go down. And now that first gun round could be very difficult. Harry, we've been talking about this all night. As to when you force by in the second round of CT, it does mean you're quite limited, especially up against when SMGs is already left over. Luckily, there's any Vado with the UMP, so that's not a huge deal in terms of the head armor. But no orb, one diffuse kit, one incendiary. Still a really, really difficult round for the NIP boys. Lose this one, it could be over. Yeah, and it seems like NIP are always in this sort of scenario where they're fighting back from a certain defeat. And while they're trying to keep themselves in this one, they've got themselves six. They're only six away from equalizing this out, but this round here is pivotal. The first rifle round of this second half. Them over on the CT side and already north. Lining up smokes and flashes out towards A. Getting out of smoke off pit. They're just going to go charging on through. Trying to play this one fast. Forrest on the site has to step up in a big way. Draken able to find the first. Get right does damage as well. Forrest is going to fall to Cajun B, but he'll be silenced by Draken. MSL gets the trade left in the 1v2. He has the bomb in hand. And he's going to try playing into B, but he might play right into the hands of Exist. That he will. And that's NIP to get themselves this rifle round. Very fast approach there for North. That's quite common. The first gun round, it's always quite chaotic in today's metas. Like I said, the force buy is very prevalent, and you know the CTs will be under-equipped and not really have enough to hold you off for a fast play. It's stick as a five-man formation, go towards quad, but the spray down's coming in there from Drac and Forrest, all working together there. Not really much they could do, but Cajun B found some form. Came down to the two versus one, but MSL wrapping around from the arch, but found exist in towards library when he tried to nip through the smoke there and see if he could leg it back towards the B side, but didn't work out for him. The good news is though for North, finding three kills keeps NIP very modest. That was their bonus round. They had a UMP in that round, didn't have the AWP. They definitely will going into round number five here. AWP comes out for Cajun B, three AKs, comping down to the Galil, which suggests that he might be thinking about an execution here. The fact he's opting for the smoke and flashbangs instead of going for the AK-47. Let's see what that will entail. Cajun B going to be holding mid. No peaks to come out from NIP. Because I've actually gone and stuck three players over on Banana. Molotov to uh, Q 
keep them pinned, not allow any of these early peaks. Catch North while they're feeling vulnerable. Exist, able to find the first, make that two. Get right chimes in with one more. And this round has been a slaughter up on Banana. Cajun B refrags best he can, but it's only one. And a one for three trade is going to favor these Swedes massively. It's Cajun B and Valdit. They're the two left alive. They're going to try and boost Cajun over potentially, but no, considering it's actually just Valdi holding the angle. Could have been a little bit too obvious, perhaps, but I think that could have worked out for them. You know, it's a four on two. Get right low HP. A nice assertive stuff there from NFP. They're not going down without a fighter. It seems aggressive towards B. Fighting at the start. Exists with two frags. Get right with the third. And now a situation which has to be must win for them. If four is run away, it could be the end of the game. But it's looking very promising. Boosting a player towards new boxes as well. I love this boost. One of my favorites in the game right now. It means you're. If you just go to the view of Rez while he's here, when he's up there, he can't be flashed. He can't be molotov Smokes aren't that effective for him. It's great for one frag and is falling back. The flashes cannot touch him. Really, really nice spot. And it's pre-fired more and more these days, but still, uh, if you get the drop on them, it could work out very nice. We'll just stay on him for now and uh, see if he does manage to get anything done. I guess his teammate will be able to spot them in first, get right with a show presence, try and bait him in. That's going to be the idea here. They're going to be walking on out Rez, just holding the angle and slowly Ooh. get right he's the is. one to kick start the party gets their attention and then res picks it up the bait and switch worked perfectly there for them and that's an ip they get an eighth only four rounds separating these two teams now the danes with no money left things gonna get interesting here henry yeah, yeah absolutely we've got a game here for sure just love that play from nip at the end as well i built up that boost and as to what they're doing it worked out really nice as well get right he faces from the coffin takes all the aggro away that first kill then a free frag for Rez as he's boosted up. That boost is very good indeed. Full eco for North and a chance for an IP to start locking things down in terms of the financial situation. Draken been pretty poor so far with the AWP. Five kills, 15 deaths. Let's start getting him some confidence now. This is the perfect round to do so. Get some kills. There it is. Now he can start getting into the zone as he takes down MSL. Looking for a multi-frag here. That would just help boost his confidence a little bit more. Five on three. Shouldn't be any frags here for the North team. Should be the clean sweep at this point. NIP got everything locked down. Don't need to push any further. You know, the full eco. Just hold the lines. Yeah, and NIP, they're not looking too keen to go walking into the waiting arms of North here. Very little invested. It's only Valdi with anything that can do too much damage. He'll fall. Get right picks him up. In the meantime, Aza going to go charging on through. He'll get decapitated. And now Cajun B, last man left. It will be a flawless round for NIP. And that's exactly what they needed. It's going to be the case now they start to build up some of this money. You can see Forrest sitting on almost $7,000. Has to reinvest in nades, but it's a nice bit of money. Probably the best situation we've seen in IP and in this in either of these maps thus far. Yeah, it is looking like they could come back into this one. I've always said when you get double digits on a comeback, that's when things start to feel possible again. Up until that point, you're just grinding it out, taking it round by round. Then the other team started becoming nervous. They think, okay, we could actually throw this game now. It was a huge lead for North, but now after winning three rounds in a row, NIP looking like this could be possible. Or for Draken once again. An aggressive play from the CTs towards that banana area. This could be exist. Get right and res. With the orb holding arch at this point. Similar scenes as we always saw North were doing. Good nade though from the T's. Taking res down to 67 HP, but he will stick towards the dog's position. Yeah, and actually, I mean, yeah, Res is going to be holding this deep down through banana. Gives you so much information. You can actually now try looping around behind. When the eventual push does come in, they have got AZ holding it for the time being. With the rest of North's attention fixated up here on A. And NIP, they're playing this very, very passively now. Draken going to be holding off apartments. Still just waiting. 50 seconds left. North now throwing out some of their utility. Not ready to commit to this just yet. They're going to start to make their way up through long now. Draken is holding the angle, looks away. The timing is not great. They decide to go for this now. The attention of the Orpa is currently elsewhere. In the meantime, though, Rez has been allowed to progress down through Banana, and that's this round. Torn limb from limb. Rez finds two. That's going to force their hand into the execution. And now it's going to be sloppy from here on in. Valdi trying to do all he can to pull it back, but Draken steps up, manages to pick him off. MSL charges the smoke, and Draken goes in with a no scope, takes him down. Config. Falls at the last hurdle, and that will be NIP. Going to go 10 to 12. 
And I said to keep an eye on Rez down there at the bottom banana. Yeah. He plays that perfectly. You're absolutely right. The fact he gets that banana control, sits towards the logs, and it comes in for the perfect flank as well. It's looking very, very good indeed. Big fan of that. It's going to be some nice orb shots coming in there from Drak. And finally, Harry, it seems to be coming together for him. Big fan of his in terms of the skill he has. I want to see him develop into a top-class player. But for now, 10-12, like we said, double digits. And he's hitting some shots now. This is what we wanted. That's the Draken we know and love. Hits two in a row. And we've got a game here, ladies and gentlemen. NIP definitely hot on the comeback here. Yeah, the Dragon hath awoken over on the side of NIP. Get right. Force back in towards CT. Doesn't want to risk throwing anything away. NIP went from being a team that were on the cusp of defeat and now almost bringing this back and could still potentially split the series. Smoke goes down a block off CT. Get right, just waits on the other side of it. Rez, gonna be the uh, the point man inside the site. Does push on through, doesn't manage to find anything in that smoke. And as it starts to dissipate, Rez up on top of Coffins, the smoke for CT has gone as well. Get right now, peeks on through. North just waiting for this smoke on Banana to go. And that Molotov gonna slow things up. Get right goes for the spray, but gets nothing done. Rez, luckily enough, does manage the trade. Got a bit of a way in, but not with Rez landing shots like that. Re-peeks on out. And now Valdi's been allowed to make his way into CT, but Draken takes his head clean off. A 3k for Draken in that round. When you think about the fact we came into the second half with Draken on three frags to begin with, he's now up on 11. It has been a recovery from the NIP Orpa. Yeah. And even though this was versus equine players, it's a great sign of things to come. Yeah, it's just promising to see his aims getting there, the confidence is building up for him, and now he'll take more audacious duels at the start of each round. As he knows, he's trying to hit some shots now. The frag title getting there. He's actually got to 14 frags out of nowhere. The last few rounds have been monstrous for him. Has been to round number nine. This time he's towards middle, getting towards boiler. Like I said, getting towards those more zealous positions. We'll see whether he can actually find another opening kill here. For now, North focusing towards Banana, and it's going to be Rez and Get Right baiting each other in right now. Flashbang has to be timed perfectly here, but Rez, he doesn't even need the flash. Gets the first, can't find the second. Get Right decides to fall back. That's the right play. He would get taken down for sure here, but still, an equal trade comes through. Grenade towards first, Orange is there, does not find Get Right. He pulls back towards Coffins. North have slowed right down, though. It's into the 4 and 4 cage, and going to be holding mid. No aggression comes through from NIP. So close to equalizing this out, you can see Exist on the rotate to rejoin, get right inside of B. North start rotating Valdi on in. As they stack up on Banana Draken and Forest, both have a slightly longer rotation, being an apps and short respectively. It is gonna slow things up, the utility, the barrage of it rains in from the Danes. As now they start this push, the unrelenting aggression. Get right finds the first, falls on back. And Emo takes the repeat back out. He's going to be able to do it. Takes himself a second. Cajun B and Valdi, they're going to remain. And they come pushing on in. Do manage to drop Get right, but exist. He's the hidden factor. Takes the peek on out. And Cajun B, as good as he's been, is able to take one more. But that will be it. NIP tie things up 12 12. And Henry, this map gets even more exciting. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. Get right, lovely play there. He could have been with Reds. Sure, the Reds gets equal trading. Gerrit could have flashed over and gone for one more, but he falls back. He looks at the bigger picture there. He knows if I stay alive here towards Coffins, let's get one more frag when they finally commit, then I can get rotations coming through and then we can have a real chance of winning the round. It's exactly what happened. Gerrit gets one in Coffins, goes back towards Emo, finds another kill, and then his teammates are there to back him up. This is a force by coming in for North as well. And Draken once again hits another remarkable shot, takes down. Cajun B, and now it's a five on four. Just to correct myself as well, not a full investment here. We have got two players going all in. That's going to be Valda and Cajun B. The other three, more of a partial buy situation for them. And with it, they're going to go fast out through mid, charging into a existent forest there. The two to try and step up, have support from Draken on the AWP in the sight. And one man's pushed up and isolated. That is going to be MSL to hit the deck. Valda. Able to drop out get right as he goes aggressive down banana and that could be their avenue of approaching to be secured here they're gonna have a change of heart wind in the sails pushes them up towards b res throws down that smoke and that's gonna hold them up completely smoke may fall in for ct res holds close to the smoke they're gonna start to try and walk on in flash through res 
Forced back, holding the angle, spots the first, but it's going to fall to Valder as the trade comes through. Draken goes down as well, trying to force the issue, and now we're backing up a two-on-two two somehow on the back of Heroics from Valder. The bomb plant does come in. Exist and Forest very isolated from this, only just rotating in. Yeah, long way to go for those guys. CT Spawn and Banana going for the pincer maneuver here. Forrest edging his way towards Ruins, but Valder ready for it. Already got in two frags, make it three in this round that exist. He'll join in as he takes down Config. Now it's down to that single play. I feel like Valder can do this. He's needing to ace clutch to finish it off. As you said, he has to ace, and he's got four. Valder pulls this one into the realm of possibility. Bomb ticking away. Exist rotating into the side, Valdi. He has to try and ace to pull this one off. Here's the defuse come on in. Just shoulder peeking it, toying with his food before he takes the fight. Exist goes for it and he wins it out in the 1v1, but Does there's he? no time left. Oh, so it wasn't the ace, but it's enough to win the round there. Four kills for Valder. I have to say, NIP may be getting a little bit ahead of themselves, pushing for those smokes, tracking with that AWP. Almost skips the round away, but there it is. Valda does enough. One player survives, so that's a bit of a problem, but... Round number 11, CTs. Plenty of money to work with here. They'll have another full buy. North to be very careful now. Lose this round to NIP. Then it could be double eco territory. This round is absolutely massive. And Draken, like we said, feeling confident now. Goes to the first pick. Can't land it this time. Cajun B gets the better of him. Five of four. Now the T's can slow it right down. Try and bait out. Wait for the reactions of the CTs. Get yeah, right. Gonna be donning his orping shoes, picks that up. Yeah, not known to be an orper, but can use the weapon. Want to get it to Forest, ideally. Now, well, it's gonna be thrown onto Rez. Forest uh, is not available for comment as he wakes all the way over here on balcony. The Danes are taking control of the mid. Get right's gonna go rotating in, and they leave Rez on B on his own with the orp to play that anchor role. And the orp is very, very strong. On that B-bomb side, playing from Coffins. Pop flashes out towards A. Well, two players for North still keep holding Banana. We've seen NIP more than willing to go aggressive there. This does, however, split the forces up, meaning only three players over here towards A. They're now going to rotate back as they try to fake onto B. Four players ready to go in, leaving MSL here to try and sell the fake out on A. He's going to be allowed to wrap through CT as well. And this round could already be all said and done with the positioning of MSL where he is. There's only one way that NIP get back into this, and that's if they find him very, very quickly or if Rez steps up. The push about to come in. Cajun B tries to line it up. Rez going to miss that first shot. And this could all come crumbling down around them now as MSL pounces out from CT spawn. Rez does manage to get the trade, but the site is overrun with Danes. Smoke has gone down. Rez can't do anything through it. And already look at this existing forest. They haven't even bothered moving off of A. Yeah. They fed Rez to the wolves. I think they have to save here, unfortunately, for an IP. It's Emma, so you're absolutely right. The fact he gets towards CT spawn completely undetected as well. North know they win that round. As soon as he's through with no CT presence whatsoever, they wait for their time just to commit. And as soon as they do it, MSL strikes. He finds that first kill and Rez can't even commit to trying to retake the bombs at that point. He does sneak away, takes MSL down with him, but it's a really clean round there for North. They're one step closer to winning this now. But Scoreline 14-12, they still need one more for match point. NIP will save three weapons here. It's going to be the AWP, two M4s, and an incendiary as well. Some few kits to work with, so that's fine. The money's still on ground either side. North, though, a nice play after finding that first pick. MSL with a very good positional control towards the CD spawn. It was uh, Draken that went down first. He said he's hitting some amazing shots at the beginning of rounds. Went for another one. Catching me got the better of him. And here we are, 14-12. I comes in for both sides. It's going to be the double orb set up. Rez win with an orb as well for NIP. Cajun B holding mid. There is Draken holding it right now, but neither player walking out into the other sites just yet. Rez boosted up as well. Peeking over the top. Nothing going to be coming his way just yet. Over here in apps, you've got Config and Valdi starting their push on it. MSL going to flash for them, and it's going to be the case that North try and get control of apps and top mid once again before deciding what it is they do. Rez spots the head, misses the shot, and that could have been the man advice taken for NIP. But the opportunity not seized, it does not present itself just yet. And as a result, banana control gonna go the way of North. Cajun B kickstarts this round, drops Rez from the equation. That's the man advantage taken. NIP now left fighting with their backs against the wall. Forrest gonna fall, and that is 
North, two men up, starting to make their way out towards A. Valder with an utterly heroic performance. Draken, round in the corner, is not ready for MSL to be where he is. Finds the first onto Config, starts to run away, and they don't get the refrag. So for the time being, he started to claw NIP back into this round. He has for sure. Draken now holding the more defensive line inside the arch. Can be smoked off. They certainly got those available, but they don't know he's there just yet. Don't want to face check this one. Flashbang comes in. He knows he has to fall back towards library. He goes. The wrap begins. One player in towards the pit. That's going to be Exist. Can he step up here? Smoked out of the equation. But Exist gets one kill. That might be all he gets now. Draken with AWP. Can't just push through here. Three on two situation with Get Right a country mile away as well. The bottom of Banana. He needs to rotate in quickly. Draken just lies in wait, waiting for his teammate. Yeah, Smoke will start to dissipate. He's waiting for Get Right, as you said, to get into position before they go for this one. Time working against them. Cajun B already up in apartments. Can wrap Brown from behind and get rid of Get Right. As he pushes up through short. Can I try and take the fight? Has to watch out. Valdi going to be holding the close angle. In comes Cajun B, and Get Right was not ready for that whatsoever. Draken just stands there and takes the bullets from Valdi. It's going to get completely pummeled. That's north to go 15 12 match point. And NIP, it was looking like they forged a path back into this one. But since equalizing it out at 12-12, they've done nothing. Financial turmoil sets in as well. NIP with about $2,500 per player. Three CZs, UMPs, North now. No, they can win it right here, right now. A little bit chaotic here in the second half. They didn't really get going till the last three rounds. They got three in a row. NIP starting to drop off quite significantly. But here we go. There is always a chance for the CZs. UMPs out as well. In terms of kits, they've got one of those. A little bit of utility. They're trying to show their dominance here at the top of Banana. They're trying to get that first frag. They need something to work in their favor. Three players here. Good grenade coming in. Will that do a lot of damage? Does here exist, but not for much. Bush comes in from NIP, and they get slaughtered in the process. AZ with two. KGB dispatches a one more. And it's the two UMP players, Draken and Forrest, that remain. One of the original NIP squad and then one of the new boys left to try and keep NIP in this. It's not looking good. North, they can taste the 2-0 in this. They can taste the victory. And Forrest, well, he's in B all on his lonesome. Draken waits out on A in case this is a masterful fake, which actually, as the bomb starts to retreat down, Banana, looks like it very well could be. Draken has to step up massively here. He's been underperforming. Throughout a decent portion of tonight, peeks out to mid, the pop flash comes through, finds the first, starts to try and fall back, the smoke buys him time. They know the Draken's here, he's going to go ahead and start to push on through. Tries to catch North off guard. Doesn't spot anyone, it's Valder. Up in apartments, who does manage to dispatch of the Draken within the site, and now it is just Forrest all the way over on B, 1v4, UMP in hand. He's got to do the impossible. Four and one. Forrest now. Up against it, Harry. I'm not going to build this one up. It feels like it's done. It was a heroic attempt there from NIP. A valiant effort, I have to say, but wasn't quite enough. Sometimes they're the most gutting games to lose, but that's what online leagues are all about, right? Developing, having online official environments to work on and seeing how you can kind of make things fit. It felt like the CD half was very good for NIP, but they'd already had a huge deficit there and it wasn't meant to be. It's 2-0 and we move over to the analyst desk to see what they've made of that match in Inferno. North getting it done in the end there. Nice tight game. We saw a better style from the NIP guys as they got a few more frags on their, their CT half and actually made the T half relatively competitive as well, but it wasn't to be. North too good, taking the 2 0 for the evening. Yeah, I think the problem was for NIP that first half. They got off to a great start, winning pistol being uh, 3 0 up, but but then in a couple of uh, consecutive gun rounds, we saw nothing from them. It was what uh, we were referencing in the pregame, too slow, too passive in their default, getting picked off by the aggression from North. You saw North great timing, uh, realizing that they don't have an optimal buy for masses. So they uh, push together towards bottom of banana and if he decides to push through the smoke, probably a bit unnecessary, but uh, all in all, it was that early uh, momentum from north in those gun rounds that really allowed them to have a strong uh, CT side. Yeah, the cohesion was on a different level in all north, regardless of the scoreline being as close as it ended yeah. up being. Uh, I, I think that round exactly that Yanko was talking about. First weapon round, North had four spot. They had didn't have a lot of utility to work with. Still pushing Banana with the UMPs and the Famasas and them uh, smoking down on NIPs for whatever reason. Just smoke, 
jumping through it one yeah. by one and then winning that one just kind of set the tone and the tempo for the whole half uh, and then, yeah, I mean, just good to see North looking really on point. A lot of the decision making. You and me were raving that about their around. deep pistol <laughs> round. Uh, they were in a four and five situation. You and me were discussing. You know, in this situation, you might want to take a risk. Maybe you know, you just maybe take side holes over, or if you have a flash, you could pop flash into the smoke and try to get make a play. Or instead, you hold the angles, you wait the retake to come in, and then you just attack together. You know, you go Sparta, and just go all attack on everyone, right? And they did exactly that. Yeah. Fought them from every angle, and IP didn't have a, a single chance to retake. Yeah, the that's the kind of counter-strike we like to see when it fundamentally plays out perfectly in those pressure situations. We loved it. We could cheer in a bit. But uh, <laughs> I, I was actually very impressed by Cajun. I think that he had uh, a lot of effectiveness on that, especially with the orb. He was playing it a little bit differently than we see he's been moved over to the arch side now and config over towards that b-bomb side so that's the adjustment that north ended up making on the ct side of this map and a few struggles there but they did make those adjustments off the back of that volder 4k it was a it wasn't an ace but he won the clutch in the end there and that was kind of what they needed to turn the tide and take the game not, uh, so not much far more. so far volder has seemed like the perfect pickup for this team you know he is these numbers in this first what five six games they played have he's just you know off the charts yeah for sure uh, it's good to see they needed that kind of uh, a more steady type of a player, uh, something that Magic Spoil wasn't able to deliver. Now they have Convict being the all over the place type of guy, and then Volda just being able to put up the numbers, not having to be that guy that, that just goes everywhere. It seemed too, like early on, that Draken and the, the guys from NIP were defaulting a lot, and he wasn't able to get anything done with the AWP, not finding any picks on that T side. And I think that really hindered them. They probably could have changed up the pace a little bit earlier. I know Henry was touching that during the cast. What do you think, Yanko? I agree. I don't think you necessarily need to have an op on the T side of Inferno. It's yeah. very difficult to find those openings early on. Uh, the way it's most effective is once you take B bomb site and then he posts up uh, behind the uh, new boxes or, or something like that and, and takes the defends the the bomb plant long range, right? But besides that, you don't really see that many uh, positions where it's m much more useful than an AK, and it really hinders you because you get tunnel vision. Like we have to set this op up, uh, up somehow. We need yeah. to make something happen with the op when in reality it's probably much better to play with five rifles and do something as a team to counter what your opponents are doing. Well, North was looking very impressive there. And now uh, let's check how that kind of leaves the standings for the week so far. Here's day five Saturday. We do have one day left tomorrow being the Sunday. But uh, this is how the evening panned out. Navi versus Fnatic going uh, in the favor of Fnatic, first of all. Then they split the series with Navi looking really dominant on Mirage, taking that 16-5 simple with uh, a really good CT half there. And then flicking over to the matchups, we just had North looking dominant, really. You know, the, the second map was closer on the scoreline, but they looked in full control, made the adjustments they needed to, and uh, were able to pick up both maps, Nuke and Inferno there. Yeah, so sorry for, for North, for sure. Uh, sitting at third in the rankings right now. I think the storyline uh, of the week so far has to be Fnatic, obviously. They've had a, had a great run, uh, just losing one map. I think that, that Mirage game was the first one where we saw that they're definitely not perfect, but they've shown that they're capable of, of playing a multitude of maps, and that's a great start for, for this team. Absolutely, and also FaZe already playing uh, eight maps, four games, uh, off to a six and two start. Not a lot of time, if any, to practice. Uh, good start for them. It's going to be interesting to see how this, how this team will look uh, a couple of weeks uh, moving forward. Yeah, with these super weeks, we're going to have teams playing different amount of matches. And I think if you play a lot early and you can get those good results, like a couple of them have done, that's, you know, great to have going forward. Let's speak about going forward. Tomorrow's matches, we have one more day of games. We have four more coming your way. G2 versus Mouse. I'm actually really excited about that one. I can't actually put my finger on why right now, but I think uh, both exciting teams. Mouse Sports with that new roster yet to really make too much damage so far, and then followed up by Navi versus NIP, two teams who uh, have seemed a little bit lackluster so far. So we'll see what, if they can bounce back and show us a bit more vigor, or a bit more spring in their step tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether today NIP was maybe a little bit of an off day for them, still getting used to competitive play after the break, and uh, how much can Navi do in a day? You know, it's difficult for a team like that, that now with Zeus is going to run a strategic style, spread out around the map. You really need to get used to the timings and everything, so they're definitely going to take a little bit of Well, that. that's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. That's Saturday, game day five of week one over and done. Let's put a bow on it. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Go, Connor.